So uh, Kim Hothead here at Central Care Home, and uh, there's a sister here who just wants to tell her story about uh, how she was a tent city resident who was unable to get into Central Care Home. If you want to go ahead and share that story. Yeah, I um, I wasn't there when they took down the tents, I guess, because I've been getting stolen from, unfortunately. But uh, mm -hmm. you can't really secure your tent, really, right? It's not like a locked door, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't been there when they were taking the tents down and everybody moved, but I know I was on the list. Um, I made sure that I got on the first one, and then with, I, when they talked to me, he said, I'd also been sexually assaulted by somebody that had been there, and that's another reason why I had left. And I told one of the workers there, the Patrick or whatever, I told him what had happened, I told him why I wasn't there and that I needed to get in somewhere quickly and he said, okay, well, your name's on the list. And I had James, the red-headed guy, who had actually called him in the first place and told him about me and he said, yeah. I went back when they were doing all the, the packing of people's stuff in the tubs yep. and uh, found out that, oh, I had to move on to the secondary list and I wouldn't be moving with the rest of the people there and, and okay. So then I, because I have an avoidant personality disorder, I showed him. Anything caused me any kind of anxiety I avoid and, and I can't I can't control it. I can't yeah. I have no control over it. I just avoid it. I'll be yeah. across the street and I'll be watching the thing but I just won't go and do it, right? Yeah. Um so yeah, I just kind of didn't really talk to anybody for a little while and two weeks went by and I I, I looked it on it again and yeah, you're on the secondary list. Oh, okay, so when am I going to be getting in here? Oh, we don't know when the secondary list is going to be getting in there. And then after people moved in here and I uh, came up to the window, I said, well, can I speak with Patrick, please? And uh, talk to him. Oh, you've been putting on a try list. Whatever the try list was, I wasn't sure what that was. Trial list. Try list. Try list. Like the third okay. list or something third list. like that. Okay. And I heard things with the Super 8 and whatever and didn't really, I didn't really know what was going on, right? You mentioned earlier that you felt like you had people who you connected with who you considered family. And we talked about that at the meetings about how people had family on the street and it's, it felt like you were kind of separated from them through this process of being put on different lists. Oh, and definitely. I went to Ten City because I, I didn't want to be... I, I felt safer there. Yeah. I felt safe around people that, that cared about me. Yeah. And then I ended up um, getting a really good deal on a vehicle, a van, yeah. because I could see that I wasn't moving in here anytime soon. So I bought a van, and uh, not that I could afford any of it, but... Um, for a place to live because I've been trying them on every housing list in Victoria yeah. and our place society said oh yeah well you can't have your dog so and, and uh, that's the other thing you want to you don't want to be separated from your dog and here at know. Central yeah. dogs are allowed to be with their people and you were a part of that back when that discussion was happening so oh, I'm yeah. sorry that you haven't been able to get in and and I mean I called Patrick Patrick actually called me back I called I tried again which is really big for me I, and Patrick called me back and told me to go and move to Choices I go, when the same thing at Choices kind of happened. I, I tried my place, but then I left my place. But Choices is far away, and you're saying that... Yeah, it's very far away. Yeah. I mean, I might have a vehicle, but I can't drive it. Yeah. I am prohibited from driving. You can't afford so it. So I, I can get insurance, but I, I can't. I don't have a driver. So I have to move around, get somebody to drive, and move my vehicle around the city at all hours of the night, at all hours of the day. And it's really... it's I've been really isolated and just disconnected yeah. from everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And that's like, not healthy. I sit in my van yeah. and I have a friend that comes and stays with me once in a while. I mean, Doug dragged me up here. Yeah. And I'm know? glad because we haven't seen each other for a while. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just. So, would you, if you could get into Central Care Home, you would want to be in here? In a heartbeat. I'd want to be yeah. in, in amongst the community people. So, do you want help for that? Is that. I do. I need help. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. I, I'm not going to have the vehicle much longer. I, I can already feel it. Yeah. The cops are trying to, to get something on me to take it and yeah. Rob is parking to tow me here this and that is I can't afford to keep the vehicle yeah so I'm gonna be outside on the street very very well quickly. let's let's put this out for Thaw Victoria and see what help we can get because this seems really sad and if there's media who want to get together with you are you willing to get together with them if you oh, for sure. and I know you want to keep your your face and name private